Alright, welcome back everyone. This is Tiberius. Um, as we were doing, we were setting up some planets on the last video. I've gone through, I've set up all the rest of the planets, and now I'm flying a Stratios, which would not have enough room to carry any of the command centers. The way you get back into those planets, go to the Neocom, go to your business tab, and go to Planetary Colonies. Brings up this little window, you see I have in two different systems. I've got both my temperates that I showed you how to set up, and then I went up set up plasma, oceanic, lava, and gas planets. From here, this well, this video is going to show you what you need to do every day. You set all of your extractors to 23 hours, so then every morning, right before you go to work, you know, as soon as you get out of bed, whatever you want to do, however it works for you, come in here, open up this screen, just double click whichever one of the planets you want to go to, it takes you to the planet. Once you have the colony set up, it takes you right to your colony. And it was like this one has a slightly different setup, but it's still streamlined top to bottom. And come in, survey for the deposit. It, it saves that I have two extraction heads. It saves all of the location of the extraction heads. And it saves that it's at 23 hours. So all I have to do is say install program. Come up to the next one, survey. install that program submit roughly 30 seconds that planet's done go ahead and move on over to the lava notice I'm flying in Rhone but I'm looking at the planet in Gamel like you can cover any of these planets it's part of the skills I'm going to look at my skills for a second on your planetary management I have command center upgrades to 5 and then planetology, remote sensing, helps you on how far away you can look at stuff and do stuff with it. And the interplanetary consolidation is what allows you to have more planets. So interplanetary consolidation and command center upgrades, you want to get both of those to five as soon as you can. The rest of them help, they're useful, but they're not necessary. But those two, the interplanetary and the command centers, those ones you need to get to level five pretty much as fast as you can get them to level five if you're going to be doing planetary interaction. But again, once you come to this one, survey, install, survey, install. This planet's running, always have to click submit. Nothing goes until you click submit. But because all the routes have already been set up previously when you set up the colony, I'm just telling it to do stuff, telling it where to go, what to, what to pick up, what to mine. The rest of the colony is all automated. So every morning you just come in. You can cycle through roughly 30 seconds per planet, and you go. Every now and then you'll want to move, I mean like this one I'm looking for aqueous liquids on an oceanic planet. It's going to be all over the place except for the few pockets where there's a land mass. And so there's really not much point in even trying to find like a better spot on this one. And I was going to say like every now and then your production will change, it'll drop off for some reason. And you might be looking at it and being like, oh hey, I got way more than that yesterday, what happened? So I'll show you here on the plasma. You come in, it rotates you over to your colony. And you say survey. Well, all of a sudden, these are not in a prime spot. They're not in the best position they could be in. I'm going to move them over just slightly. Make sure you don't get that negative percentage coming in on there. And like it, the numbers didn't change very much, but they changed a little bit. To where I'm getting a little more out of it. You won't need to do that very often. You're going to be pretty much where you need to be as long as you survey a good spot the first time when you plant your extractor heads. Notice these ones. I have white clear over here, but I'm at the edge of my range. I can't go any farther out there. To compensate for that, there's some people that will go in and they'll build extra extraction heads farther away with a longer link. And I'll just move this down here so you can put in a planetary link from your storage. And they'll put an extractor head like out here ways. That gives them that extra little bit of reach on the extraction heads. And that way they can reach into the you know denser pockets and get the, the best mining they can get. However, if you don't have your upgrades up, your CPU and your power usage for those links, that is what kills your colony, is paying for those links and the, the power. Right now, I have all of these where they have plenty of CPU and plenty of power available. I can put in extra extraction heads, 
and extra processors, extra storage units if I want to hold it on planet for a while. That usually isn't necessary. The, you have plenty of storage in them already. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really just not necessary to, to really be doing anything with those. Actually, I mean, I'm, I'm already on my fifth planet. Survey, install. Always click submit. Another good thing about making them all 23 hour cycles is if you're doing it on a 23 hour cycle and you forget to do it one morning, you do miss a day, it's all right. You're not, you know, completely hosed. You're not going to not get anything. You're just going to miss one day of production. Whereas if you're trying to run it on, you know, six hour cycles, so you get more production, but you have to back to update it more often. If you're online, for, you know, every six hours, that's great. You'll get a lot more production out of running shorter time frames. But if you forget, then all of a sudden you're not running it for a day. You've only got six hours of production rather than 23 hours of production. The catch-22 is if you run it for the full two weeks that you can, about a week of that, you're getting a whole lot less than if you had just updated it every day. So if you're going on vacation, go ahead, set everything to two weeks. I'm going to be going on vacation here in a couple weeks with you know my parents. I'm going to go see my grandparents down in a couple states away. I'm probably going to set all of my planets to just mine and run for the entire six days that I'm going to be gone because I won't be able to get online to update. But as long as you can get online every morning to update before you go to work and it's a regular day, it's a lot easier just to come in and have it run. It goes every day. All of my planets have now been updated. That's all you have to do every day. Come in, double click your planets, and start your extraction hits. As long as they're extracting stuff and it's all the planet materials have been routed, then you end up getting to something like this where I have you know half of the storage is filled up with water. I have everything that I'm possibly going to need on producing this water for those fuel blocks for the coolant. And again, like you have to look at what your final end project of what you're going to build is going to be that's the stuff that's going to determine what you need to look for on the planets. Past that, that's what you do every day. Real simple, not difficult. It's one of those that you have to get in, you have to update it. This is considered passive income on EVE, so that it does have that hindrance of you have to get in and update it, you have to do something, so it's not completely passive. Otherwise, the programmers would not let you do this to get all of this basically free isk just from setting up a planet. As always, fly safe, have fun.